Well, everybody, I am back and really excited. You better put your seatbelt on. We got a superstar in the house today. And you know, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And this woman certainly deserves that. So my very special guest and friend is Wendy Eda. She's also known as America's number one expert on living fit, fierce, and fabulous. After 40, by the way, y'all, she's 70. I don't telling you the truth she is an internationally recognized usa today and wall street journal best-selling author tv host my goodness lifestyle coach and fitness expert uh, she is a two-time guinness world record holder eight-time award-winning national fitness champion and has made dozens of appearances on tv uh, that's TV and talk show. Some of the shows that she has appeared on has been Inside Edition, CNN, Dr. Oz, Fox News, NBC, ABC, BET, Essence Magazine, and so many more. She has a brand new book out. It's called Unbreak Me, Push Beyond Fear, Gain uh, Resilience, and Reclaim Your Strength. Anybody interested? So everybody, let's give a warm shout out to the one and only of the fabulous Wendy Eda. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? Hi there. I am so excited to see and talk to you, Constance. It's been a blessing and it's a great day today. It is. Well, let's get started. I got to make sure I got my clock going because you and I get to talking. <laughs> and, and Wendy, um... You have a brand new book out. I endorsed her book because yes. I believe in her and her work and behind the scenes. I kind of know this, a, a little bit about the spirit of this woman. Unbreak me, push beyond fear, gain resilience and reclaim your strength. What made you write this book? OMG. So... I was so excited to put this book out. It is a conglomeration of what's happened to me and to the world in the last three or four years. Um, it was laying heavy on my heart and I thought it was really time to spill the tea on my life at this point in time and how Things have changed so much, not only for me, but mm -hmm. for so many others that I've talked to. And, you know, you're so right because people look at you and they like, man, she's 70, looks like she's 30. She can she can <laughs> dance. She can move. She's beautiful. She has a great life. And I know you said um that people were coming up to you asking you, how did you make some of the transitions that you had to make in your life? Or how did you go through that? Or how did you move out of your comfort zone? How did you push through fear? So that's what we're going to be helping people with. So what has been the most recent transition that you can share with people about you, you yourself personally, and then we're going to move on to help people all over the world. Well, let's see. So many things since uh, the whole world and how it was flipped upside down, just like so many, and have gone through things I have as well. And I've definitely put some of this in the book. But uh, everybody knows, uh, most people know by now that I've come through, I've come through domestic violence and I've rebuilt mm -hmm. myself, reinvented my life and life has been great. And I remarried, in fact, uh, remarried to a man for 33 years wow. and it didn't survive COVID. The many things it didn't survive but certainly it didn't survive COVID after 33 years. I went into really a, a deep depression for three years at least, but I am feeling amazing today. I have pushed through fear and that book is the culmination of 
a lot of things that I've been through emotionally, mentally, and really how it can help others. So it takes courage to push through the fear. And I did that. I have reinvented myself. I pulled from the skills I have deep down inside of me. And by golly, I am telling you what I talk about, what I preach about, I practice what I preach. Yeah. I follow through. And I got to tell you, Constance, oh, my God, I got goosebumps running through me. It freaking works. It freaking works. I worked with my clients in having these things work. And most importantly, myself, because if I'm not right, how can I help anybody else? And I have used these skills over and over and over again. And my heart now is open to love. And I am so excited about that. We can tell. We can <laughs> tell. <laughs> and, and, and so even in business, there have been so many changes and transitions with COVID and everything like that. Did you have to really push beyond fear in your business? I did. And all facets of my life, just like so many people, I am very grateful that most of my business has been online. Mm -hmm. I coach my clients all over the world online. The clients I did have, I only took so many uh, that I personally visited because uh, I put a limit on it so that I can really give my full self and the quality of time that people who come to me deserve. I am so invested on people enriching their lives. I know how important it is. I, I am sincere about bringing them up. There was a time when I didn't have anybody who I could tag or help mm -hmm. me. I know the feeling of that desperation. And people have come to me with the same desperation, saying, Wendy, you're my last hope. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So I pull from the heavens above to help me to help them. And that is my mission in life. So my business overall was great. I was able to keep in contact. I help people emotionally through some of the traumas uh, they've been through, just like I have. And I was very blessed to be able to continue to do that. And luckily, the clients I did see personally were uh, consenting to go online to continue their journey. Yeah. So you mentioned trauma. And so many times we think trauma is just so dramatic, but trauma can be all of the shifts and changes that have happened to us. So what would you say to people who who have unresolved trauma, unresolved stuff, and all of that is sort of keeping them in their comfort zone? The first thing, Constance, is do not isolate. Oh, do yeah. not isolate yourself because that causes more drama. You feel like you're more alone and you'll go down fast. You got to talk about it. You got to find someone who you can talk to, who you trust, uh, that can help you on your own time. Know that you have to go through a process. It's, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. You can't feel guilty about any of that. You have to feel your feelings and go through the processes. I just went through that, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, it, having a 33-year marriage is like ending it feels like a death. Absolutely. So I went through the death process of a grieving process, process, I should say, of trying to make a comeback. and. One of the things that I did do was I got some therapy. That was very helpful. Uh -huh. I encourage people to do that. Um, at least talk to somebody you trust if you can't get on board with that right away. And don't isolate yourself. So those are really some keys to uh, going, starting that process. Time is going to help you through 
a, a certain part of that process, but it's not the end all be all because you can be living today and you got you may have some deep seated things in you that come out in your dreams. So I know. true. I've had that happen <laughs> over and over and over again. Them come out my dreams and I mm -hmm. wake up in a new world. <laughs> yeah, I thank you so much for your vulnerability because so many people get stuck in their trauma. And really the universe spirit really just has a big powerful life for us. And I love that you mentioned process because it ain't going to happen overnight. And the fact that even though you are a coach known all over the world, you still reached out to get the help that you needed. Yeah. Yeah. We all need to, you can't isolate yourself. We all need to talk to someone and some things are more complex than others. And I'm really good at helping other people, but I try to set, stay attuned myself or tuned up. I should say myself. It's just like the workouts. You work out to keep your body right. Stay on mental track. Also keep that tuned up because Truthfully, that's the header, that's the leader, that's the controller. And without your mental abilities intact, your body is not going to follow through. In fact, it will take you down or it will bring you up. That's so good. So you mentioned growth can only happen outside of our comfort zone. And I can hear people saying, oh, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> So talk about moving out of that comfort zone and all of the wonderful opportunities and experiences that might be waiting for folk who are listening or watching this. So the first thing, Constance, is it's so scary mm -hmm. to, to go outside of what you normally do. It's scary you feel like the rug is pulled out from under you. You're afraid to move forward. You've got to push past that fear. And that is the only way you're going to have growth. You are going to stay stuck yeah. if you do. And let me tell you, the times that I did push through, it could be something very small. And I encourage people, and in, in Take Back, you'll... I'm um, in Take Back Your Life. That's my other book. <laughs> in, in Unbreak Me, I give you in each and every chapter homework, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I give you some skills. So you're not just reading about it and experiencing it. I give you some skills to work your thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the times that I have moved out of my comfort zone, I have found amazing opportunities. And it, as I was going to say, it could be the smallest thing. And I encourage people to start with something small. Mm -hmm. For example, it could be sometimes you might be waiting for a phone call and or wanting to make a phone call or wanting to hear from somebody that can help change your life but you're afraid to pick that phone up. Mm -hmm. You're afraid to make that call to someone who can help you because you feel maybe intimidated or something. Make that call, start right there. That can blossom and you'll, and you'll understand when you make that call that, okay, you didn't die. You mm -hmm. still, you, it, it, what's the worst that can happen is the way you have to think. Then that can blossom into going into a room full of people, for example, who you don't know and starting a conversation. That's scary for a lot of people. Yeah. It used to be scary for me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. or, or getting on stage and talking to people. Ooh, that's really a lot of people really afraid of that. Whatever it is your take, whatever that thing is for you that you're afraid of, Get out of your comfort zone and do it. And oh my gosh, there were times when I was afraid to go somewhere because I just felt uncomfortable. The time and something I learned to listen to my gut. Mm -hmm. 
something was telling me you should go. And I was being lazy. <clears throat> I don't want to go. And there were times that I didn't go. But the times that I did push myself and went, my world changed. Mm. Something happened. Either I met somebody there or something happened to take me to another level. And I go, wow, I would have missed out on that. Mm -hmm. So I was back and forth with that kind of thing. And then finally, I got it. I go, oh, I, you know, every time I go, it's a gift waiting for me. That's the way I started thinking about it. And every time, because I manifested some of that, there was a gift waiting for me. Go with intention. And that comfort zone that you were in, mm -hmm. you won't miss it. In fact, you'll start right now. It's like I look for the uncomfortable because I know mm. there's a gift there. You know what I mean? That's good, Wendy. And and that's the way you have to think about it. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Wow, I love that. I love that. So so the next question I'm going to ask you is about the powerful word resilience. I love that word. What does that mean? And how important is it for listeners to really gain resilience? Resilience is really pushing through, keeping it going to the end. There is no give up in this game. Mm -hmm. And you have to earn skills to be able to get it so that you can put plow forward and not give up. Resilience is taking those steps along the way. Keep on plugging forward until you get to where you want to get to and not giving up. Resilience is falling seven times, eight times, and getting up 10, keeping it going. So it's really important to get that concept and that I've dedicated a whole chapter to that yeah. foundation um, to be able to do that you have to do, I always say, start small. I, I, I love that about you because it's not overwhelming to people. Correct. Correct. And this is the way I have learned to keep it going. This is the way I have reinvented myself and keep coming back because I use these mind methods to help me push through that fear. It's always that fear that changes us. It keeps us paralyzed or keeps us going forward. The fear could be somebody telling you no or saying something mean to you. And now you go into a cage and, and, and sleep in fear. Well, I am talking about learning these skills to keep you pushing through that and having those skills forever. And those forever skills will keep you resilient. And as long as you're plowing along the path, keeping it going, you are going to find gifts and blessings that you never knew existed. And you're going to be so happy with yourself. But it's important in the meantime to learn these little skills that build you up. I have a client who uh, has read, she got the book and the audio and she couldn't wait to see me. She um, texted me and said, Wendy, I got it now. Mm. This woman has gone, in spite of, in, 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 in outside of, I should say, outside of our session sessions, I went even deeper than what we had talked about. And she said, combined with that, she said she really got it. This woman went on to start writing uh, uh, and, and, and getting into her own passion, mm. specifically artistry, which she's a really a, a skilled architect, but had went in hiding about it through some personal matters, this woman has started to blossom because she said she stopped at each chapter and said, 
I have to do this homework. <laughs> I have to build on this. And that's my point. It made me so happy. People have written me about the same thing. It's like those little things will help you become resilient. Again, and you've heard it before, this is a marathon. And in order to make that marathon happen, that resiliency happen, you got to learn these little skills. So keep that in mind that learn these little skills, mm -hmm. master them, then move on. Well, well, you know, I read some of your reviews. I've been nosy, Wendy. I, <laughs> I read some of your reviews on Amazon. All of them are raving. And a lot of them mention, I love it that she gives us baby steps, little micro steps that we can take. What's another step that people can take uh, in order to really strength, strengthen their resilience? Oh, my gosh. So I give so many. I have so many in my head. I'm so excited to talk about <laughs> it. It's like <laughs> it's one of the great things, one of the biggest things that I have certainly uh, uh, really focused on in the last few years is meditation. Mm. People underestimate that. Mm -hmm. They they think it's like a, a, a small thing. Meditation and through meditation, I, I practice um, little sayings that help me stay grateful mm -hmm. to the universe and to God. Um, the meditation helps your spirit. Mm -hmm. It keeps you stress-free or less stressed. And you're able to clear your mind to move forward because the devil gets on your shoulder, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it starts talking to you. And if you're not centered, you kind of fall off. You fall by the wayside. You feel desperate. You feel depressed. You, I mean, and you stay in that mode. Sometimes we do to get depressed, but if we meditate, we can come out of that. Which oh, is what yeah. Um, but meditation, and the third thing is staying grateful, repeating phrases that will keep you grateful. Because if you're not grateful, what's going to come into your cup? What's going to fill you up? The, the the being grateful in itself, and I dedicated a whole chapter to that, chapter three. Mm -hmm. right? It's important. Being gratitude is important. So, um, and it's important in all little aspects of it. That's why I needed to have a, a chapter dedicated to it because people really have to get that. So when you said what else it contributes to resilience, OMG, you got to be uh, mindful in, med in meditation and you got to stay grateful. Yeah. So we know you have a busy life. I mean, you filming, you exercising, you running, you you interviewing. So you've made meditation and gratitude like a foundational priority in your life. Absolutely. I don't know, Constance, what I would do without it. Yeah. Uh, I feel like my mental abilities because I'm vulnerable just like anyone else. Yeah. Without that, I'm telling you, the devil, get thee beyond me. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll ride your back and make you feel horrible. So the total foundation, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, you know, I, I am, I'm a God-fearing woman. So that is my grounding. Being grateful, gratitude, is my grounding and foundation and and that meditation I, let me just say this and and people ask me this kind of question all the time they they always want to know about fitness and what mm -hmm. you eat and all that they want to do all these right things and that's great and mm -hmm. you need to do all of those things but if you are stressed Teach. None of that matters. Mm -mm. Stress is 
going to override all those wonderful things. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, this has been for a long time. And as recent as this past week, someone wrote me in one of the social media platforms, a gentleman, and he talked about that very thing. I mean, this was just a prime example of what I have always talked about and seen happen. So this is just the current case where the gentleman said, oh, he does all these things I just said. Mm -hmm. But he said, I am sick. I had a heart attack, heart failure mm -hmm. because of stress. I have, uh, I've, I've eaten right. I've done all these things. And now at this point in my life, not only do I have heart problems, but I got, he didn't, he didn't mention what they were, but a myriad of problems all due to stress. Yeah. Even though he had done all the right things, it will take you down. And it's so important. And that is why I'm saying meditation will help calm your spirit. If you have anxiety, panic, mm -hmm. everything, go into a meditation. And I have actually coached someone through that very, those very things to help center them and get them out of their head and, and, and stop being fearful of reaching the dreams they know they ha should have and deserve. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So I've heard you say a couple of times that you've reinvented yourself. That takes courage. That that takes getting out of your comfort zone. You're 70. How, how what would you say to people who might be stuck in, oh, I used to have a job with corporate America or I used to be married? H how do you reinvent yourself? What <laughs> would that look like? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we all have had those kind of examples happen in mm -hmm. our lives, right? Mm -hmm. It's always something and we got to know life changes all the time. It's never going to be the same all the time. We would love it to be because we, again, we like to stay in our comfort zone. <laughs> but when those things happen, just take a step back, take a deep breath and use that energy to the, the energy that maybe it, you feel rejected or you're feeling low or you're feeling like you're too old to work again because there is work atmosphere discrimination for mm -hmm. ageism. And, you know, I, I've, I've coached a lot of people that dealt with that, you know, no one will hire me because of my age, you know, that kind of thing. So many things. So it, it sort of takes, if you let go from a job or you don't have it, it takes a triple effect on you, depending on where you are in life. Step back. This is the time, uh, just, you have to get creative at this point. Yeah. Talk it out with somebody. Talk out your ideas. Get, yeah, certainly get out what has happened to you and how you feel about that so that you can thresh that out of your body and start on a new road. Just look at it as a gift to start something maybe that you've been passionate about. If it's not a job, it could be anything. It could be a death even or whatever change it is in your life. The basic things you have to do is step back and uh, and maybe and, and get, get an exercise routine going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's part of what I did. And that is what helped clear my mindset. Believe it or not, I, and I always talk about it, uh, working out, doing some kind of cardio, just just get started by walking. And and um, it will start to clear your head up. I do a lot of brainstorming while I'm walking or running. Mm -hmm. and it just it has always done that for me, clearing my mindset. It takes away the stress and it takes you into another zone. And then start making calls, you know, and reaching out to people. Just look at it as a gift. I love that. <laughs> I love that perspective. I was telling Wendy before I hit record that I dropped one of my contacts 
And I'm like, where is it? You know how you're crawling on the floor. And I'm like, well, I'm going to have to put in my right eye contact in my left eye. So I, I said, I'm going to see this as a gift. So if you're watching this and you see my eyes are little, whatever, I'm on here because it's a <laughs> gift. I know this woman is a real gift to you. So so lastly, how can we reclaim our strength? What would that look like for listeners? Yeah. So I always like to start with the mindset. Oh, that's big. It, yeah, part of it is what we said, centering yourself with the gratitude and the meditation, right? That is your spiritual strength. And so it's not just always about physical, right? We got to get all three parts. And that's where sometimes therapy comes into play. Mm -hmm. All the parts uh, working together is what's going to take you there to where you want to be. The strength. Yeah, certainly physical. Get out, just move, dance. I love, as Constance said in the beginning, I love <laughs> a little dancing in the mirror like nobody's watching. <laughs> and um, that just makes me happy. So what is it that makes you happy? Some people will say, well, I don't like doing any exercise. I don't, that's not making me happy. I really don't like it. I might do it. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we'll do it because it gives you the benefits. So think about that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It may not make you happy immediately while you're doing it. You may not want to do it. But if you take your mind beyond that and think about, okay, and this is one of the things that keeps me personally motivated to do the right thing or not. And that is, I think about the benefits. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I want to do it this day, but okay. If I do it, I know I'm going to feel great. I know that I'm going to sleep better. I'm going to feel stronger. And it's going to make me feel good by the time I get to the end of it. Uh, and it's going to do so many other things for my health. If I don't do it, okay, I'm going to be mad I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel sluggish. I'm not going to sleep and I'm going to maybe gain a little more weight. Okay. Which, which one do I want to go for in that, in that moment of, oh, I don't really want to do it. Okay. I'll take the high road. <laughs> that's the way I think of it. So it's either one of those two. And that's the way, that's where the mental kicks in the mental strength. I give so many ways you can build your mental, physical, and emotional strength. But certainly, you got to do the strength training. Oh, you yeah. have to have the flexibility equally, balance conditioning, core conditioning. I give all of those treats to help you gain ground in your strength. And, and that's the physical side of it. And, I, and, and the mental side of it is comical in some ways that I've written about how to uh, strengthen your mental abilities. And, and some of them are tough, but I'm telling you, it works, folks. It works because I, I, I tell you, I kid you not, that the things that I am telling you, I have actually done and worked it. So you got to build that mental strength to be able to push through it to do all these things. So true. So <laughs> true. And, and so... Uh, you, you said that, that this has been a great year of manifestation, but I see you have a very um, a prioritized baby step life of every day you're making a decision. You're making a choice. I'm going to do something physically, mentally, and spiritually to help me to live my best life. Is that correct? You got to. You got to. I gotta, um, every single day. And, and, and in the last three years that I talked about, it was hard putting one foot in front of the other. Hmm. I, 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 I'm very good at shutting myself down and helping others. But after I've done that during that time, my downtime, it was hard putting one foot in front of the other. So what I do and how I work with people 
It inspires me when I help them. It brings, it lifts me up. It keeps me going. And, oh God, I, I don't know what I would do without it. So I'm so freaking grateful that God has put me on this road and this path on this journey in my life. It's, I have learned to go after what I deserve. I've learned to trust my gut and it has served me well. So when I say to you, these things, I've experienced it to the full max. And so every single day, I think of those things and it, it gives me power. It gives me strength. It gives me peace. And I am excited to get up in the morning these days. I am happy to say and jump out of that bed and get ready to embrace that day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love what you said. You said you're ready to go after what you deserve. And that sounds like for listeners or who might who might be watching this, maybe she had to go through a process to really fully embrace, understand, and accept what she deserved. You know, I am worthy and I'm going after that. Speak on a little bit just self-worth, self-esteem, uh, knowing your own value, etc. You were put here on this earth for a reason, every single one of us. Mm -hmm. You automatically have the rights and the certificate, if you will, to deserve everything you put here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. We are born with everything. And then life takes away a lot of stuff. We are born with no scars. And then people ding us. Life dings us. Things happen. And we're given these scars. So then you spend the rest of your life trying to figure it out, trying to recoup. So the mere fact that you were born worthy, yeah, you are worthy. And so you have to come back around to that and talk it out and get people out of your head because they're not living your life. You are unique. Not like maybe these other people that may be in your ear. You're not like them. And that's something I had to learn. I had to stop dimming my light mm. and being who Wendy Eda is. And when I followed that path, wow, the world blew up. And that is how life will have you stay beat down and building yourself back up to that self-esteem after life has dinged you. You can heal those scars and that becomes your beauty. You have to go through the steps once again, yeah. the process and don't keep it all in because that's going to kill you with stress. So what does it feel like to have moved through your trauma, healed it, uh, come out of your comfort zone? I mean, you were in domestic violence in your first marriage, uh, reinvent yourself. And now the world, you are a gift to the world. I was watching you on YouTube and the world loves you. What, what does that feel like, Wendy? Well, I certainly appreciate the love. I am in deep gratitude for the love that has come back to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've tried to do so many things right in my life. Mm -hmm. There are always times when you don't know what you don't know, but when you do know, you do better. Um, so I stay grounded to that fact. And I accept it all in. It feels great. I... Uh, feel joy. I feel like my life is not in vain. Mm -hmm. And it keeps me on the road to what I'm doing. And I know it validates that I'm on the right road 
in my life, I have found the reason why I was born. And that's just validation for that. And I always encourage others to do the same. You've got to be brave enough once again to be you. Be brave to be you, no matter what anybody says. They weren't born like you. God gave you your own set of uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Grabbing on to that and sending away the naysayers, you can find your self-esteem again. You can find your joy again, and you'll never regret it. I, I can tell you're in a different vibe, <laughs> in a different consciousness, yeah. in a different space. Yeah, because we've talked. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and it is amazing. And your book is awesome. Like I said, I went on uh, Amazon. I read some of the reviews. And mm -hmm. for listeners... Uh, Wendy, I want you to uh, tell people where can we where can they get your book? What kind of services do you offer? Are you still coaching? Do you have videos? Yes, yeah, all so, of that. So, where they can find me, of course, all of my products, or everything I do is on WendyEda.com. That's Wendy. IDA.com. I'm all over social media. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, um, Facebook, and YouTube. And my handles on those are either are mostly Wendy Eda Fitness mm -hmm. they can find me, but um you can find my products on um uh, on my website, you can find the books on the website or on Amazon, Unbreak Me. And my other books are on there, Take Back Your Life, uh, Habits of Success, and then my action guide. The product, the newest product that I have is, um, which people ask me for, I did this workout challenge last year. I'll, I turned, uh, so last year I had a really big party because it was my 70th birthday mm -hmm. and, uh, it was a 21 day challenge. So I did, it was so popular and so many people had such a good time. I decided to do a whole big workout thing, which people are asking for on my website. It's called the 21 day challenge, but it's with the bonuses. It's a 31 day challenge, including some coaching uh, videos that come along with it and how to get started, the basic setup, uh, the little things that you do. It's incredible and it's been very popular as well. And then I have some other programs on there, but that's the popular one now. Again, wendyeda.com and I'm on all the social medias. You can definitely find me at Wendy Eda Fitness. This is a powerful book. Uh, when I read it, I felt your your vulnerability, your honesty, and I just love because I'm a how to kind of girl. I love at the end of each chapter, you tell people one, two, three, four, you give them exercises, how to's and just simple tools that they yeah. can use to begin to implement in their lives. Yeah, that's important. Mm -hmm. That's my idea of take a little bite at a time. Uh, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Right. So what would be the last words or your parting words or wisdom that you would like to share with the world, Wendy? The most important thing in all that I've said, in order to make your goal, in order to reach your dreams, in order to get to that platform that you know you deserve to be on, never give up. It doesn't matter what age you are, where you come from, or what you've been through. What matters is that you never give up. That's where your resilience lies. And that is where you get another opportunity to make it right. Powerful words. Everybody, go to her website. She's a woman of integrity. She's a woman of wisdom. And you're going to really love her book and also her products. Wendy, thank you so much for coming again on the Law of Retraction Radio Network. Love and appreciate you. Everybody, make a decision to create your best week this week. Love you, Constance. I love you, too.